Halloween is just around the corner, which makes it a very good time to talk about bats. Here to tell us all about why we need to get serious about these flying mammals, Dave DeRocco of the Canadian Wildlife Federation and Lisa Fosco from the Toronto Wildlife Centre. Thank you so much for being here. Our pleasure. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Dave, maybe start us off by telling us a little bit about what you do and your organization. Well, the Canadian Wildlife Federation is Canada's oldest uh, conservation charity. Our goal is really, our, our tagline is your connection to wildlife. Our primary goal is to connect Canadians to wildlife so they develop an appreciation for it. Uh, what we find is people who go enjoy an immersive experience in nature tend to want to save that nature. So my role as, uh, as national marketing manager is really to help uh, drive those programs like our Help the Bats program and make people aware of all the great initiatives that uh, our organization um, facilitates. Right. And Lisa, what do you do at Toronto Wildlife Centre? My role is as a wildlife rehabilitation manager. So basically what that means is that I oversee all of the rehabilitation efforts, the animals that are injured or orphaned or displaced which bats are a very primary species that we see. Mm -hmm. So our role really is to rehabilitate the animals and do our best to get them back into their wild environment. So let's talk a little bit about the bat situation, which I, I have not heard of, but when I read this, I was, I was sort of devastated by this. So tell us a little bit about what's happening with the bats, Dave. Well, there's a few things. I mean, uh, bats, uh, this little guy on the table here, um, the, the little brown bat has been added to the endangered species list this year, along with some uh, several other species. Um, they're suffering from uh, multiple things, including habitat loss, but the big disease is white nose syndrome. Uh, it's, uh, it's a fungus that grows on bat colonies in caves. Uh, it attacks their muscles and blood vessels while they're in hibernation. Um, it depletes them of moisture depletes um, uh, food sources so they wake up in hibernation, fly out in the winter. Of course, there's no insects uh, and we're finding them, uh, entire colonies uh, dying in the winter and being decimated by white nose syndrome. Wow. What is this used for? What, what is this? Well, this is uh, one of the ways that we, you know, certainly like to help bats. Um, this is a bat box. Okay. Um, and, you know, they come in various uh, shapes and sizes. But uh, this is our way of giving uh, bats a fighting chance by giving them habitat, certainly in urban communities um, where um, you know, they might not have natural caves or mines or things to uh, sleep in. Um, erecting a bat box is a great way to give bats um, habitat. This is sort of a, s a smaller version. Okay. Um, we like to build them a little bit bigger, um, 24 by 24 inches. You can put slats on the bottom to keep other predators out, but uh, it's just really um, habitat for bats. Lisa, when you get the bats that have this white nose syndrome, what are they suffering from? Can you heal them? How does that all work? It's actually very interesting because I've been doing this since white nose has been a new thing. And historically, when we would get white nose bats, they would have that very classic look to them where they had a visible fungus around, around their nostrils and their face. And frankly, we just don't tend to see that anymore from a rehabilitation perspective. Now, keep in mind, too, we're, we're not going into caves. We're getting animals that people find um, that are displaced and debilitated, and they're able to contain them and bring them in. But now what we're seeing is animals more that are just not strong, not thriving, and we're starting to see different patterns with the wing membranes, where we have seen some bats with some wing issues and done biopsies and sent it off, and it came back positive for white nose. And that's really more of what we see currently. Um, we have healed quite a few of them at this point. Good. And some of the current studies are really suggesting that there are certain species that are developing a resistance. I couldn't speak across the board, but the main species that we see is one of the ones that has been known to start to develop this sort of resistance. So I'm not sure what's going to happen in the future, but at this point, we take them in as a treatable animal. Right. Um, we do our best to get them back in health. Typically, we get them in the off season when they would be hibernating. So that basically gives us until spring to work with them. And we hope that they have that resistance with them when they go back to their colony. Okay, we have a, a little clip to show, and that's just uh, to give us a little bit of a better idea about what we're, what we're talking about. Little brown bats may be small, but they have the largest distribution of all bat species in Canada. Their big appetite plays a role in insect suppression, helping us reduce pesticide use. Insects give bats fat reserves, preparing them for the winter. Sadly, a fungal disease called white nose syndrome is causing the death of thousands of Canadian bats, including the little brown bat, during hibernation. The species may not be able to survive without our help. 
To learn more about the little brown bat, visit hww.ca. Dave, these, these boxes, do you suggest that every house should have them? Well, maybe not every house, but certainly um, it helps. I mean, providing habitat for species that, uh, that are losing their habitat is always great. Um, if you're by the water or in areas where bats might be, um, places where large insect populations, which are you know, pretty mm -hmm. predominant in lots of places in Ontario. Um, but yeah, there, you can put up as many as you like. There's no real um, um, code restrictions locally, as long as you're putting them up on your property. Um, we suggest uh, bats like to swoop, um, you know, and come up underneath. Um, so it, we suggest that they're on their own individual pole or on the outside of a house, at least 12 feet in the air. Um, we we try to suggest you don't put them in trees because um, bats can sometimes get caught in the branches and and other uh, predators can can come and get them, like cats, for example. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, you can, you can put them in anywhere, houses in Toronto, in your backyard. And you can make these on your own or you can purchase them from your website, is that correct? Oh, uh, we do have, we have downloadable PDFs that uh, would give you an example of this, you know, this pretty small one. Uh, if you right. wanted to build one for, say, a maternity colony, um, you would build it a little bigger and have protective slats um, so that m more than one bat can get up in there. But, uh, and they're real easy to build. Uh, we do suggest that it's a natural wood. Okay. Um, it's also good to paint them with a, with a non-toxic black paint because the paint um, absorbs heat, which uh, makes a bat a little more comfortable. And uh, yeah, they're real easy to build. Great family project, especially yeah, this time of year when bats are, little brown bats are exactly. looking for a place to, uh, to find some habitat and, and nest for the winter. Okay, we have another video. We're going to go to it. And maybe Lisa, you can tell us a little bit about what we're, what we're sort of seeing. Sure. Yeah. This is actually a silver-haired bat that's eating, and this is what we do with our bats in care. So these are young bats that are being hand-fed. Um, so basically, they have an enormous metabolic requirement every day, and they have to eat a lot of food, which is also why they're a good thing to have in your yard when you have a lot of things like, like mosquitoes. But here we are with different types of feeding styles for different individual bats. Like people, they all have their individual personalities. So some of them eat on the floor, some of them like to be wrapped up as if they're in their crevice or their cave. Uh, but this is a daily thing for us at Toronto Wildlife Center. Yes. And we have rabies immunized staff and volunteers that work specifically hands on with these species. Great. Okay. Um, so if people want to make a donation, they want to help out, they can visit your website. You have a special website. It's called helpthebats.ca. We do. And that's, uh, I mean, Halloween is a great time to, to obviously raise awareness of bats and bat issues. But helpthebats.ca has all kinds of content on it uh, that you can learn about white nose syndrome. Um, to build a, a bat house, we have a great contest right now where you can win an echolocator for bats. It's a really great uh, okay. um, uh, contest you can enter, but uh, helpthebats.ca, we'd love you to visit. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Now find out more about how you can help save the bats on torontowildlifecenter.com or cwf-fcf.org. Stick around, Cinefranco joins us when we come back. <laughs>